Hey everyone, it's Charlotte from the Kia Hyundai channel and this is not a forte. This is the 2025 Kia K4 and today Gabby and I are going to give you guys a realistic view of what it's like driving this and also some of our first impression. So let's start it off with something controversial. Ooh. This steering wheel, it is flat on the top. It is flat on the bottom. Some might say it's bulky. Some may say they don't like it. It's got an off-centered logo, which oh. I like, I like. Um, but a lot of people were saying, oh my goodness, it must be so hard to steer or to do a full turn or to do any type of dy more dynamic driving with it. But guys, that's not the case. Um, it's super comfortable to hold, actually. I find that it's got a great amount of cushion. This one's heated, too. It's got that two-spoke design. It's got easy finger holds. I really like it. And, guys, it's a steering wheel. It's n it's not hard to use. It may not be relevant because we're in Austin, Texas, and it is hot here, oh, but goodness. it is also heated. And Kia does a great job with their heated steering wheels and the fact that they heat the entire wheel. Mm -hmm. So very nice to have when we're back in Canada. <laughs> this is a Canadian model, I should also yes. say. So this would be different for a US built car. Mm -hmm. But I really do like how we got the miles per hour, but also the kilometers, kilometers. per hour. So me as a Canadian, I feel okay. I, I know how fast I'm Yeah, going like we have a better concept spec. of it. Yeah, instead of doing the calculation. Yeah. But also from your steering wheel, like you can see, you can access all of your media controls from here, including that virtual assistant, which does so much. Mm -hmm. And then from here, you can activate, you know, that um, stop and go, that cruise control, everything is super easy, as well as your drive mode select being on there. So you can actually put it into normal or sport mode on the fly, yeah. which I really like. Which I'll show actually, yeah. it's a sport mode. It also changes the cluster theme too, which I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. From the passenger perspective, this vehicle is incredibly comfortable. Um, I love that Gabby and I actually have the same seats. Yeah. They're both cloth, we can both adjust um, the backrest. There's six ways that we can adjust it. And then from here, you can also go and see our main unit. So driving, this is of course a breeze to use. We have that wireless Apple CarPlay, so completely wireless experience in this car. So we actually just hit a bump, which I think is a great <laughs> sidebar. What a coincidence! Segue. Sidebar. So yeah, so this vehicle, I mean, spec for spec or on paper, it sounds like a rebadged Forte. But like we said earlier, it it's is not, not a, forte. a Forte. It is not a Forte. I drive a Forte every day, except when I'm here. And it is not a Forte. <laughs> So it has the same amount of horsepower and the same amount of torque. Yes, the engine is the same displacement. However, the engine technology is a little bit different and the actual platform of this vehicle, it's longer, it's wider, there's a lot more space and there's improved noise, vibration, and harshness. So that doesn't actually mean we're adding noise, vibration, or harshness. We're actually doing better with it. So this is a left turn only. Let me lock in real quick because I don't know where we're going. There we go, that's where we're going. Um, so the vehicle is actually much, much quieter. The road noise is far more subtle compared to what I'm used to on a Kia Forte. Compact vehicles, again, they are typically the more affordable of the vehicles you can find. So a lot of people aren't expecting, you know, Maybach, Mercedes level quiet, but this vehicle is pretty, pretty silent. Spec for spec, this vehicle is actually exactly the same as the Kia Forte when it comes to the engine output and the displacement. So it's a two liter four cylinder MPI engine, which has 147 horse and 132 pound feet of torque. Mm -hmm. And we all know those aren't race car numbers. There is a turbocharged option available for the K4, which we have yet to drive. Hopefully we can do a dedicated mm -hmm. test drive review on that one day. You guys will have to follow along for that. The transmission is also the same as what we saw in the Kia Forte. So it's an IVT, which is an intelligent variable transmission, uh, similar to a CVT, but there are mechanical differences. So if you had a bad experience with the CVT, you might prefer the IVT. It yeah. definitely feels more realistic to a traditional transmission. And especially if you do put it in a sport mode, you'll feel those artificial gear shifts be a little bit faster a little bit responding. More in tune, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So again, one of the things that the K4 does really well is just the emphasis on some of the tech. And like, this is the tech that people actually want and it's really easy to use. And a part of that is just the fact that it is real buttons that are super accessible. And I want to zero in a little bit on the map function because this is one of the better things. Now this car, don't be fooled, it doesn't have navigation. But when I press map, it actually brings up my phone. So if you're trying to adjust something on the fly when you're driving, it's super easy to get in and out of without having to dig through the screen. You can really just use the buttons and they're tuned to work with your smartphone, which I think is fantastic. 
And then down below, you'll see that we still have those same ergonomic controls when it comes to our actual climate control. And it's easy to use. Like guys, everyone, you know, everyone is familiar with what this looks like. Everyone understands what it is and what it does. Uh, down below, just to top it off, wireless phone charger, which is fantastic. We have all of your favorite, you know, tech and convenience features in one up from the base. So I'm glad you mentioned the wireless phone charger. It is a feature that I usually never use in my personal vehicle. Number one, because I have to plug it in to actually use CarPlay. And uh, of course this vehicle improves upon that, but also because the wireless phone charger charged my phone so slow. In this, it was quick and it didn't overheat, which is huge because we are in 30 plus degree weather and we're oh, very, yeah. we're overheating, but our phone is not. And that's a huge, huge upgrade. It's really nice because you can, you're able to basically charge any type of phone well, so long as it is, you know, wireless charging, but then also pair it and it's, you don't need, you know, to mess around with all the different cords. There's the option, of course, for cords if you want it, but I think that that is really great. Just seeing all the tech that we have and how convenient it is, like this was definitely in mind like created in mind with the everyday driver. You know, this is for people who are going to work. This is for people who are in the city, you know, on the highway, everything along those lines. Again, in line with Forte ownership and how this builds a completely different path from the Forte, it feels m like it is wider, but it feels, feels much wider. A lot of the times, yeah, the dimensions have changed, but what does that really translate to mm -hmm. in the cabin? This vehicle does a much better job at using its space. It feels open, it feels airy, and I like how it's not too, too dark in here. I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but um, I'm very happy that we have a cloth seat model today. And I never thought I would say that because I personally do have more of a preference for leather but I don't think I could do the heat with leather seats today, you guys. It is way too hot out. And these seats, I mean, they don't really get warm at all. Cloth mm -hmm. seats are really good. And in the winter, they heat up pretty quick. So I think for Canada, it makes a huge difference to get a cloth seat if, uh, if you can do with it. And we do have heated seats. The controls for them have changed. They're actually mounted on the door, which I think looks really cool. I think uh, another place where this vehicle improves upon so well too. And, and we mentioned this in our other video of just the general walkthrough it is so much in its standard trim levels and i don't mean price point wise because price point wise it still fits that compact segment it's not it's not crazy out there but you get a lot of standard tech and safety and this emphasis on the tech it's unheard of for us to have push to start with remote start over the air software updates smart cruise control is a huge one too so i'm really hyped to see all that in such an attractive package. Absolutely. Um, so I'm really glad that you mentioned over-the-air updates because remember, we're keeping in mind the convenience and over-the-air updates definitely fits the bill. Now, if you guys are new to this channel and new to you know what Kia is as a brand, over-the-air updates is something that they've brought in with their new software, which we see in this vehicle. And basically, it allows that anything that's done through software in the vehicle, so that can be a transmission update, that could be a fuel economy update, anything along those lines, it can actually be done from the comfort of your own home. So it's, you're no longer having, to, you know, you can skip the wait. You don't have to go to the dealer. It can be something that's done automatically, which I think is great. And especially again, guys, that's that standard feature that's on the LX. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Yeah. You know, your time is valuable. Spend more time driving your car. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It's crazy to see such huge tech improvements in an entry level car. Yeah. This will eventually be our smallest, most affordable vehicle mm -hmm. because I mean, we do have the Rio's gone whatnot and i do have to say although the initial purchase price is a little bit more than what we're used to on the rio or forte you get so much more car yeah. and it's a car that can suit your lifestyle for quite a bit longer you mm -hmm. don't feel like you're cramped in a tiny compact a to b car this vehicle it, it gives you a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of creature comforts without having to go too high up in the trim line yeah this is incredibly practical for everyday use and i think it's I think a lot of people are really going to like it and find yeah. that it fits our lifestyle. It's also worth mentioning that we've been driving this car for hours today. Hours. Literal hours um, in the extreme heat. So we're already pretty uncomfortable. However, not in the car, not in the car. We're comfy. The AC is great, but the seats themselves, like Charlotte mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. these seats are great. So although they're cloth, I know everyone likes to hate on cloth seats. So comfy. I feel like the more that we've been in vehicles that have cloth seats when we're like, I like cloth. Yeah, like, why do I like, drive? Why do we like this? Yeah. Um, I'm now realizing I have to get in the left lane. Oh, handling. Good thing <laughs> this vehicle handles well, steers great, and is visible. Yeah, and see, Gabby's not struggling with that steering wheel at all. No. She no. is a semi-professional race car driver, though. I am a little bit of a profesh, but yeah. um, we want to talk about parking this vehicle, too, because, again, I feel like a lot of the buyers are going to be people that are commuting, driving a lot, mm -hmm. living in the city, and um, let's do a parking demonstration. Let's go. Let's go park this, girl. Is 
are very visible. Nice and easy. We don't have a lot of obstacles to work with though. <laughs> so now we're gonna go and do the parallel park test. And we'll show you guys what comes up on the screen when you are going to park mm -hmm. and what types of helpful information. So this is a little bit of a tight squeeze and I don't really have a car to line up off of. So we're gonna be working with a lot of mirror and a little bit of camera too. So let's, let's get started. We're winging it. So here's your camera feed. This will come up when you are in reverse, mm -hmm. which is great. And there also are different angles and viewpoints that you can look from. And then your mirrors, they are gonna be electronically controlled so you can get your perfect configuration. And you can adjust them on the fly. And just like that, we're parallel parked. <laughs> Parked in. Success. Well, let us know what you guys think about this incredible vehicle. We certainly had a ton of time filming it and spent a lot of time doing so. Now, if you guys have any questions about this vehicle, the features that it has, leave a comment down below. But don't worry, we also have lots of videos available on our channel. So if you haven't already, like this, subscribe to the Kia Hyundai channel and leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time. Bye.